My girlfriend left me on my birthday to go be with her guy best friend. Been together for six months and everything has been actually pretty good. With the exception of her guy best friend moving back to the city. When I met this guy, I knew right away that he has feelings for my girlfriend. Especially when he gets drunk, he gets super handsy with her. Obviously, I told my girlfriend that I didn't like him around her at all. But she put her foot down and told me that I had no say in it because he was her best friend. I basically didn't bring it up again. But they would hang out all the time. And they were always together by themselves. They never invited me to go along with them. My birthday was coming up and her and I had already booked a little cabin in the woods. We were very excited about this. But then she slowly started to ask me if I wouldn't mind if her best friend joined us. And I told her I didn't want him to be there. It was my birthday and I was paying for the cabin. You see, my girlfriend's really broke, so I basically pay for everything. Then she threw a tantrum and said that I was being controlling and that I didn't want to let her have fun. Then she picks up the phone and calls her best friend to complain about me in front of me. Part two is up. My girlfriend abandoned me on my birthday so she could go hang out with her guy best friend. Part two. After I told her I did not want her best friend coming to my birthday getaway, she threw a tantrum, called him, and complained about me in front of me to him. I was actually so hurt that I grabbed the phone and hung up. She looked at me and told me that I had no right to take the phone from her and blah, blah, blah. That's when I broke down into tears and asked her point blank, do you have a crush on this guy? Immediately, she said no. But then she told me she had a confession. I asked her if she had feelings for him once again, and she said no. And then I asked her if he has feelings for her. This girl just stayed quiet. Then she had the gall to say... What if he does? Is that really that bad? I actually had to explain to her why that would be a bad situation. Finally, my birthday comes around and she is nowhere to be seen. I was waiting for her in my car to drive to the cabin with her. An hour later, after she's supposed to be there, she sends me a text saying that she's going to stay with him and that hopefully this distance will make our relationship stronger. Instead, I took my whole family to the cabin and now I'm ignoring her. Now she's been calling me nonstop. I took her not showing up as a breakup, but she wants me back. What should I do? Okay, I have the most horrifically embarrassing story time about, you know those people that everyone's talking about that record themselves singing prior, and then they post it like they're the ones singing, and they're like, and really it's just literally that, like, a recording. Okay, well in middle school, I'm so embarrassed to tell this story. In middle school, I used to be obsessed with Omega, and me and my friends would go on Omega all the time just to, like, mess with people, but also we would, like, meet cool people on there. And I'd met, like, a couple people that were actually, like, my friends. I, like, they were, we were friends through online and whatever. And I'm one day with my friend, and we were on there for hours and hours and hours, like, talking to people, messing with people, whatever, and then we came across this guy. <laughs> he was singing in the most angelic voice, like, he had a guitar, he was canning, he was literally canning. He was singing at me with a guitar, and for some reason, I just hadn't really broken out of patriarchy yet. So I, was, I fell for it. Like, oh my God, he's so beautiful and amazing. I'm in love with this guy on Omegle. I literally sat there and listened to him sing. And I was like in awe. And then he stopped and he's like, was that good? And I was like, that was so good. Like, add me on Instagram. I'm in love with you. I'm in love with you. Add me on Instagram. But we did. And then I went around telling like all my friends, me and my best friend Bailey, we were like, just like found this most beautiful singer ever. And like, Emily's talking to him. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And one day I'm listening to the radio and this guy was singing this very specific song that I'd never really heard before. Like I'd never heard it. I thought he wrote it honestly, but I was like, I, I didn't really ask. The voice was like so indie and like so good. And so like almost like male cursive singing. And at the time, in like 2013, like that was sick and nasty. That was perfect. Like, thank you very much. I'm listening to the radio one day in my mom's car and this song that he had been singing on Omega, mind you, we had been speaking for like a month and a half at this point, like talking about meeting each other and like, I, this was the only time I'd ever met a guy online and was like, I literally love him. I'm in my mom's car and Sean Mendez comes on. <laughs> it was him! It was this song! And so I went to my little recording because when I had heard him singing it, I recorded it on my phone. I was like, listen to this guy's voice. He's so good. Like, blah, blah, blah. Put it on my Snapchat. Sent it to all my friends on Snapchat. I'm like, oh my God, this guy, oh my God, is so good. I heard that song on the radio and it all clicked. He literally was not singing it himself. Oh, like his whole persona he had built was around him being an artist and these songs he'd been writing. And it was literally not only Shawn Mendes' songs, but he had literally been playing Shawn Mendes through his computer and I fell for it and thought I was in love with him basically. I was like, this is the best singer I've ever heard in my life. I felt like Simon Cowell. Like I just found the new breakout artist and it was Sean Mendez. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. The effect of nice popular girls. When I was in middle school, I was pretty insecure about my body, but for some reason I found a dress at Walmart that I fell in love with. You guys already know my history with dresses and I decided to wear it to school. I don't know. There was this girl though, for some reason who had singled me out. She was like a newer student at our school, but still she had it out for me. I guess she didn't like my dress. She had like this emo punk aesthetic and I just kind of sat there quietly telling her I didn't care. But in reality, I was crying on the inside. These two popular seventh graders who were kind of like in this other world. 
were sitting across the table while we were supposed to be watching this video presentation and they come to my defense asking her why she would even mention my dress saying i don't even get why you're making fun of her dress when it's actually really pretty and i remember the dress it was like bright colors checkered pattern and this girl kind of just rolled her eyes and walked away but they literally consoled me two of the girls that i never talked to i kept my distance from and i don't know i'll never forget that that was so sweet and i avoided that mean emo girl for the rest of the year but then I used to have this friend and her family definitely had money and I honestly don't believe she was a bad person or anything But she definitely made sure that everyone knew that about her family She was just very very out of touch with reality Case in point her parents got her a really nice car when she turned 16 and she was mad because it wasn't a tesla You would call me and be like, oh my god I can't believe I have to drive this stupid car until my parents can get me a tesla Meanwhile, I was over here working two jobs just so I could afford to buy a new car and she knew that So I was like, are you just being insensitive? Or are you actually heartless? She did not have a job at all. Her parents would just randomly send her ridiculous amounts of money for nothing. Which is great and fine. Until you rub it in your friends' faces. Everything in that whole entire friendship was always a competition. Every time I would share any sort of accomplishment about my life, instead of cheering me on like I always would for her, she would just immediately find a way to like one-up me. I used to try to say embarrassing things about myself to her on purpose just to try to get her to mirror me a little bit and like keep it real. Because that friendship just felt so incredibly fake. In a real friendship, you should be able to share your highs and lows, right? Or she would only share her highs, one up other people when they would cheer their highs, and then cover up her lows and keep it secret from everyone so that everyone would think her life was just perfect, which is actually kind of sad if you think about it. There was also some things that she did that were downright vindictive. Whereas my friend I talked about in the other video would just ask what I'm wearing every time we went out. This girl would ask if we were dressing cute or casual. Literally anytime I would be like, oh, I'm going casual, literally just leggings and a t-shirt. She'd be like, okay, cool. And then she would show up dressed to the nines, dress, skirt, whatever, full face. Like, that's fine, but you know what you did there. Like, why did you even ask at that point? Moral of the story. Story. Be real with your friends. My favorite time my mom has been just an absolute villain is the time that she matched with this guy in this dating app and they were about to have their first phone call. So she came into my room and she's like, Becca, why do I talk to this guy about I'm scared? And I was like, literally all you have to do is be normal. You'll be fine. And she was like, okay, I can do that. I'm just a little nervous. And I was like, there's literally nothing to be nervous about. You can do it. You're like, I don't know. How old is she? She's older than me. So the guy calls. She's like, I'm good. I got this. I go downstairs all of a sudden for less, probably less than the length of one song later. I hear her shouting shouting she was like you are full of it you are full of it like screaming I'm like you're who are you shouting at is my dad here is it 2008 <laughs> all of a sudden she hangs up and it's silent so i burst into her room and i'm like who who was that what was that she was like hey what's up what do you want who were you who were you talking to just now and she was like mm, just now the guy why what? I was like, well, I don't know. Just one thing that comes to the top of my mind is that when most people are saying things like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. You yelled a cuss word at him and then you told him you're blocking him on everything. So I'm just wondering, how, where, how did that come up, mom? She was like, oh, I asked him who he voted for. Obviously. But then I remembered, I realized it's literally my fault because I forgot to tell her that most people start with the word, hello. <laughs> that one's on me. I thought it was common sense, but not for Kathy. Never for Kathy. So, yeah. I was babysitting my friend's kids and his daughter came rushing into the room and she was freaked out. Her parents had only been gone about an hour and she just kept repeating, I need to call my dad, I need to call my dad, he needs to come home right now. And I said, okay, we can call him, but first, um, what's wrong? Maybe I can help you with it. And she said, no, you can't help me. And I said, okay, um, well, just, just tell me then, just tell me what's wrong. And she was like, I have to go poop. And I said, oh, okay, you can, you can go poop while I'm in the house. And she said... I need, I need help wiping. And I was like, well, I can, I can help you wipe if that's okay. And she said, no, only my mommy and daddy can help me wipe. And I was like, that, that's a good rule. What if I text your dad and I ask him for permission, then can I help you wipe? And she went, okay. And then she skipped off to the bathroom and eight seconds later, she was ready. I was like, no wonder she was freaked out. We were seconds away from a disaster.